Cheers. Quarantine Corner. Good morning, Thorpe Cardinals, and welcome. Did you start without me? Uh, no, I didn't start without you. Okay, then let's get going. All right. Uh, good morning, Thorpe Cardinals, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Foster's Quarantine Corner. Today is Friday, May 29th. Today is my last episode of Mr. Foster's Quarantine Corner, and today I am joined by a very special co-host, Maya. Maya here claims she is my biggest fan and even sent me some fan mail this year. All right, go ahead and take it away, Maya. Okay, your joke of the day comes from me. Why, why did the donut go to the dentist? He had to get a chocolate filling. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, give that a whack. Well done. That was a knee slapper, by the way, Maya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we have a jam-packed final episode today. episode today, so let's get started. Today, our fun fact and adventures in quarantine go hand in hand, so we're going to do them together. We've got a virtual invention convention from the sixth graders today. Take it away, Miss Milliron. Hey, Cardinals. It's that time of the year when my sixth graders are usually challenged to um, invent something new. And most of the time the kids tell me, how can I think of something new? And I always tell them, okay, what if Edison would have said, there's nothing new? What if Steve Jobs would have said, there's nothing new? There's always something new that can be invented. Now, what I did is I got to thinking, which I usually do, and try to find science in everything that I look at. And so somehow or another, I got to thinking about umbrellas. Now, the basic umbrella was invented about 4,000 years ago. And they were basically called parasols. And they were invented primarily to keep the sun out. Okay? Now, the Chinese were the first people to actually kind of waterproof their umbrellas so that they could use them for rain protection. So they waxed them or lacquered them because they were made out of paper and then they could use them for rain. Now the word umbrella comes from the Latin root word umbra, which actually means shade or shadow. Now, starting in the 16th century, the umbrella became popular in the Western world, especially rainy climates in Europe. And at first it was only considered to be a suitable accessory for women. So it probably would have looked a little fancy like this one. But then along came a guy named James Hanway and he carried an umbrella for 30 years in England and popularized the umbrella for men. And a lot of the English gentlemen often referred to their umbrellas as a Hanway. Now, the early European umbrellas were made of wood and whalebone, and then they were covered with an oil canvas. In 1852, Samuel Fox invented what we would call the steel ribbed umbrella design, the basic one. Now, this is a fancy one, but it has the steel ribs, okay? Now, after that, along came the compact, collapsible umbrella and this was um 1969 i think for um mr bradford no bradford e phillips who got a patent for a working foldable umbrella these things can be dangerous so i'm going to do it like this and like that okay so this then would be a collapsible foldable portable umbrella so he got that patent, and then, fun fact, in the United States, about 33 million umbrellas worth $348 million are sold each year. Which also brings me to a cool fact that in 2008, or as of 2008, the U.S. Patent Office registered 3,000 active patents on umbrella-related products. So sixth grade inventors, when you think that there's nothing new to come up with, there is. Get a load of this. My niece introduced me to this. This is the upside down umbrella. Now, you know when you are out in the rain and your umbrella's all wet and you bring it in and you try to bring it into the car and you get all wet and then drips all over, right? Along comes the upside down umbrella. 
Now, this one opens up like that. And you have an upside down umbrella. They even redesigned the handle so that, I think it's so that you can hold it and get in. Now, when you get into your car, watch this. It folds like this. You shake out your umbrella. You pull it in easily instead of trying to wrestle with everything. So this, I thought, was really cool. I'll show you again in case you missed it. See that? And these also are much more windproof. In fact, it might have even come with a guarantee. So, inventors, it's not too late.
Great job on those inventions, kids. Very creative inventions, and I can tell that you worked very hard on them. Great job. All right, we have a special treat for all of you today. Uh, our kindergarten team has uh, put together a virtual kindergarten graduation ceremony for us to enjoy. Check it out.
so much for putting that together and congratulations to you kindergarten students on graduating that is a fan that is an amazing amazing accomplishment all right well Maya your mom is graduating this year or retiring um, how do you feel about that um, well for one thing I'm glad she won't be spying on me during class but then the, the sad part is that I miss the snacks in her room whenever I forget when at home of all the things you're missing, it's the snacks, huh? Yep. Yeah, that's kind of how I would feel, too. <laughs> all right. So we have Mrs. Miller's grand finale of the year. Take it away! Foster's Quarantine Corner, take five. Hi, Cardinals. Mrs. Miller in here with probably the final episode of the Miller and Mad Scientist moment. And one of the things that you know a little bit about is the Incredible Box of Science. And I rarely empty the Incredible Box of Science, but tonight I think I'm going to. So I'm going to just be sharing with you some of the fun stuff that I've collected over the years as I've taught science. And um, the sixth graders right now are working on their Shark Tank Invention Convention. And a teacher friend of mine gave me my very own scrub daddy from Shark Tank. So that's in the incredible box of science. One year I taught um, some things on polymers. And so I learned about polymers and how they chain and all of those fun things. And that silly putty was a good example of that. So then I started, believe it or not, yes, collecting different kinds of silly putty. I found Super Bounce. I have this blue one. This is a glow in the dark. This is, um, I think it's another glow in the dark one. A color changing one, the standard one. And then another color changing one, changes from purple to pink with heat activation. And then my favorite one is this metallic purple one that's absolutely beautiful. So, when I get onto something, it seems like they seem to collect for me. Um, another thing that there seems to be a lot of in here are fidget spinners. Now, when these first came out, they had the potential to drive most teachers crazy. But then the more I looked at them, I thought, you know, the more we can do some science with those. And so um, not one, but two, I won't open all of them. Three, four. I just kept finding more really cool ones. And then I found some real science with some 
where you could attach magnets to them and then they do some really cool stuff. So fidget spinners are not just for irritating teachers, but they can be used for teaching. Another thing in the incredible box of science, um, when I taught waves, and my students are going to know this, I used a lot of slinkies to show a longitudinal wave with the compressions and the rarefactions. And so, um, there started a slinky collection, different sizes, and a very special one that a student brought back from me when they were on vacation. Thank you, Miranda. Yes, I remember. So I have my slinkies. I also have in here, because this has been collecting for a while, I have a pen with a stylus because this was one of the first ones that came out and I was really fascinated that they included a stylus on the top of a pen. I have my 3D glow-in-the-dark shark. I have some pens. Now you think pens? Yeah, but of course they're not going to be ordinary pens. I have this pen that you can write with in a different way. And then I have my Elon pen that folds into a jet. And probably my all-time favorite pen. This usually gets a wow from the kids. Um, I have also a couple of very environmentally friendly pens when those first came out. Oh, yep, and another fidget. I also um, have my earth as a golf ball. This truly is painted like the earth, which also leads me to a super ball that has the clouds and the atmosphere above the earth. And then I bought, never really tried it, but now I probably will. This is supposed to be the highest bouncing super ball. You can see I've opened it, but I've never really tested it out. Um, one of the things, and some of these things have come from there, I got to go on the field trip with the sixth graders to the science museum. So I've picked up a few things from there. This is called a rattleback, and you'll know why it's called a rattleback. And another thing that's really fun from the science museum, and that is going to fall because it doesn't like to stay in one spot which is another mystery for kids to figure out. I have my um, nail puzzle, which is famous from up there. One year I bought a what they called a magic egg. <clears throat> and it doesn't look like anything special, but um, it's, it's an opalescent egg and it changes color when you put it in water. It'd be really hard to see on a video, so I'm not going to show you, but you can take my word for it. Um, You'll laugh at this, but I do have some straws in here. And this is when everything was starting to be aware of just being more um, environmentally responsible. So this is straw made from plants. It's 100% compostable. I got that on a trip. And some of you will remember my um, pan boiler. This is a finger boiling pen. So if you watch, hopefully this will work, I can make the liquid in it boil, which is really fun. It's a small version of the ones that I had up in my room. <clears throat> and then I also have these two bouncing cubes. Now they don't look like much, but when I bought them, there was this competition to see how many times you could catch it in a row when you bounced it up and down. Much harder than it looks. Not going to demo, because it'll fly all over the place. <clears throat> Another really cool thing, and I might have to move a couple things here. Um, I've, told, I've told some students about going to the Gem and Mineral Show, and one year I felt like I had really hit the jackpot. <clears throat> When I bought these rocks, 
that will change colors in a blue light. Probably one of my all-time favorite things. And another couple of other rocks that I have. This one actually is has real ruby in it. And this one, <clears throat> which looks to the naked eye actually kind of ugly, but then when you put the light on it, it's a very brilliant red. So some really, really fun stuff. Now, um, one other thing is this has been sitting in my room for quite a while, and I don't think we got to it this year. <clears throat> so I'm gonna turn this on for now and get that going. And another thing that I know people really wanted to do all year long was to turn these all over all at one time. So I'm going to do that. These are things we've wanted to do all year long and just didn't. So now we're going to have the fun with that. And while all of that is happening, um, one last thing that didn't quite fit in to the incredible box of science is the book, I Wish You More. And I'm going to share this book with you as kind of my grand finale to uh, The Quarantine Corner, um, Millionaire's Science Moments, and also to my career as a teacher. I wish you more ups than downs. I wish you more give than take. I wish you more tippy toes than deep. I wish you more we than me. I wish you more hugs than Uggs. I wish you more woohoo than whoa. I wish you more will than hill. I wish you more can than not. I wish you more snowflakes than tongue. I wish you more paws then fast forward. I wish you more umbrella than rain. I wish you more bubbles than bath. I wish you more treasures than pockets. I wish you more stories than stars. I wish all of this for you because you are everything I could wish for. And more. Thanks, Cardinals. Thank you so much, Mrs. Milliron, for being such an important part of our school. You've touched hundreds of lives here at Thorpe, and you've been a blessing to the whole community. Thank you so much. All right, as you know, this is my last episode. The reason I started filming these episodes was to keep kids engaged with me, the teachers, and with each other. Uh, I never anticipated doing 49 of them. Uh, my hope was just to bring a little bit of sunshine and fun to everyone's day as they pass through this challenging time. Um, if you were able to enjoy any of the episodes or they gave you a little bit of a pick up, I'm, I'm really glad. That was my goal. Uh, and I appreciate the support from all of you. And I've really value the, the interactions and relationships that I've built while doing these episodes. Uh, so thank you so much for being such a big part of, of these episodes and helping them, I guess, be a, a little pickup for people. So thank you viewers. All right, and thank you Maya for being such a fantastic co-host today. All right, that does it for today's episode, Cardinals. Please remember to stay safe, Stay sanitized and stay smart. Mr. Foster's quarantine. Hey guys, so if you remember earlier this week, I had a video talking about how even though Mr. Foster says that today is his last episode, we're going to do a super secret surprise episode for Mr. Foster on Monday. So what I need for you to do is send me your videos to tell me what you liked about Mr. Foster's Quarantine Corner, what it meant to you, you know, maybe you watched it every day and you looked forward to it every day. Uh, you could tell me your favorite part, 
but we are going to surprise Mr. Foster with these awesome videos and he's going to see it on Monday. So please send in your videos. I will be making the episode on Sunday, so please send them to me by then. All right, you can send them to bfoster at thorpe.k12.wi.us. And remember, it's a secret. Mr. Foster's Quarantine Corner.